series that I'm doing where someone asks me to make something, I film myself making it, and then I share it with you so you can make it as well. <laughs> For the very first episode of Pixie Makes, I'm going to do a special request for my friend Dave. I've known Dave for a very long time. He's a huge nerd and a huge geek, and I say that in the most endearing of ways. He also writes for a website called Temple of Geek. If you haven't heard of that website, you should check it out, templeofgeek.com. It's basically a one-stop website for all things geeky and nerdy. There's articles, there's podcasts, they do movie reviews, television reviews. They talk about everything nerdy and geeky and go for it. Visit the website if you're into that sort of thing. So Dave is a huge Star Wars fanatic. I don't think there's enough words in like the English vocabulary to encompass how much of a fanatic Dave is about Star Wars. And he asked me to make something to celebrate the new Star Wars movie coming out. It's called Solo, A Star Wars Story. And he wanted cookies or some sort of baked good that I could make so he could share it with his co-contributors to the site Temple of Geek. And I was like, sure, I'll make something. And of course, whenever I think of Han Solo, I think of Chewbacca. So for this episode of Pixie Makes, I'm going to show you how to make chocolate Wookiee cookies. <laughs> yes, that is correct. So Dave, these chocolate Wookiee cookies are for you. And since I want everyone else to make these cookies as well, and I know not everyone has the same skill set and skill levels for baking, I made three versions of these chocolate Wookiee cookies so you can find, you know, which version you are most comfortable with and make those. There's an easy version, a mid-level version, and kind of a more expert level version. So before I show you how to make these, let me remind you that you can get all the measurements for all three of these recipes at my website, pixienoms.com. And let's get to baking some Wookiee cookies. Of course, when you think of a Wookiee, you think of its hair or fur. So for the base of the fur or hair-like texture that I'm going to get on all three versions of my cookies is frosted shredded mini wheats. It serves as a base to get the hair-like look and texture without it being actual hair. If you wanna use a different flavor of the cereal, you can, but I just went with the regular frosted mini wheats because you get that tan color from the wheat cereal and then you also get some of the white light color from the frosting. It's easy, you just crush up a bunch of them into a bowl and that is the base. And to the crushed cereal, I'm adding crunchy, chocolate sprinkles. And that's because it gives it another depth of color, another texture. It's not so monotone or one note and it'll kind of mimic and look like real fur where there's a variety of colors and textures and everything. You can use as much or as little sprinkles as you want. I'm just making a big bowl of this here because I'm doing three versions of these cookies and I need a lot of Wookiee fur to cover all my cookies. Once you've mixed in the sprinkles with the crushed cereal, Set it aside and we'll get to it later. Version one of my chocolate Wookiee cookies is by far the easiest because we're using pre-made store-bought cookie dough. You can pick any flavor you want. My store only had chocolate chip, so that's what I'm going with. You grab a hunk of the cookie dough and then you squeeze it together in your hand to get it a little warm and then you roll it into a ball. It helps to warm the dough a little bit and make the outside a little sticky or tacky to the touch because we need our Wookiee fur to stick to it. Once you got it rolled into a ball, press it into your mixture of shredded wheat cereal and sprinkles that I'm calling Wookiee fur from now on. You wanna make sure you get a good coating on it and you wanna make sure all of it sticks. And you can do that by pressing it down just a little bit to ensure some of it gets embedded in the dough. Then you put it on a parchment lined baking sheet. And then bake it in the oven according to directions on the package.
The one disadvantage of store-bought cookie dough is that it tends to expand and spread out a lot in the oven once it bakes. So your Wookiee fur coating isn't as coated as it originally should be, but it's still okay because it kind of gets the idea across of a Wookiee cookie. And that's it. That's version one of the chocolate Wookiee cookies. Version number two of my chocolate Wookiee cookies is a little more advanced because we are making our own cookie dough. This cookie dough doesn't spread out as much as a store-bought cookie dough, so you're gonna get more thick and even coverage of your Wookiee fur and it looks a lot better. Start by bringing half a cup of unsalted butter to room temperature. And to that, we're going to add brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, it doesn't matter. We're using two thirds of a cup total. And since it's a lot easier, I'm using an electric hand mixer to cream together the butter and sugar. You want to cream together the butter and sugar very well. For about three to five minutes total, the mixture should become fluffier and slightly pale in color. Then to the creamed butter mixture, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda, then add one tablespoon of molasses. And so it doesn't become a sticky mess and I get all of it off the spoon, I've sprayed mine with cooking spray so it slides off a lot easier. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. This helps color the dough darker and also gives it more of a chocolate flavor. And finally, one large egg. Once all the ingredients are in the bowl, use your hand mixer to make sure you mix up everything well so that everything is well incorporated. Next, it's time to add your cocoa powder. I'm using a third of a cup, which is more than enough chocolate taste since we added chocolate syrup earlier. And since cocoa powder has a tendency to fly everywhere when you use an electric mixer, I decided to fold it in by hand. and mix it until it was well incorporated with the butter mixture. Next, it's time to add the flour. I started with one cup of flour and mixed it well with the hand mixer. Then when there were no dry spots of flour left, I added another half cup of flour and mixed that in well with the hand mixer as well. And then finally, I added another quarter of a cup of flour and folded it in by hand to make sure that all the mixture was well combined with the flour. Once the dough comes together, it should easily form into a ball and is slightly sticky to the touch. Next, you'll grab little pinches of dough, about a tablespoon or so, and roll the dough out into a ball. Then press it into your Wookiee fur mixture, which is the sprinkles and shredded wheat cereal.
Then put the cookie dough on a parchment lined baking sheet. And lightly press down to help the cookies not be so domed or round hard little balls once they bake in the oven. Bake it in the oven at 350 degrees and set the timer for about 15 minutes. Once they're done, take them out of the oven and let them cool completely on the baking sheet. And that is version two of my chocolate Wookiee cookies. If you like making your own cookie dough, but you're not quite into decorating everything so detailed, this is the version of the chocolate Wookiee cookie for you. And finally, the third version of the chocolate Wookiee cookie is the most complex because we're making our own dough, we're rolling it out, we're cutting out shapes, we're shaping it to make it seem more Wookiee-like, we gotta make the Wookiee first stick, and then we're adding decorations on top. As with the previous cookie dough, we're starting with half a cup of unsalted butter brought to room temperature. And then we're going to add two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. You can use light brown sugar or dark brown sugar, it's up to you. Since this dough gets a little stiff and hard to mix, I'm using my stand mixer to help me out. Cream together the butter and sugar for three to five minutes to ensure that they're well incorporated. It should look fluffy and pale once it's done. Next, we're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Two tablespoons of chocolate syrup. Again, this helps color the dough and adds a nice chocolate flavor to it. And finally, one large egg. Once all the ingredients are in the bowl, mix it together on medium speed until it's all well combined and mixed thoroughly. Next, we're going to add our cocoa powder. For this cookie dough, I used a special dark cocoa powder. It gives it a nice darker color than regular cocoa powder and it has a stronger chocolate flavor. We're going to add half a cup of this cocoa powder to our butter mixture. And since cocoa powder gets everywhere whenever you use an electric mixer, I used a bowl guard to attempt to reduce the cocoa powder mess on my counter. It sort of worked. Once everything is well combined, the mixture should look almost black in color. Then we're going to add two cups of flour to this mixture, a quarter of a cup at a time. You want to make sure the flour is well incorporated between each addition. And once it's done, the dough should be able to hold its shape fairly well and not be sticky to the touch. Then get some of the dough and roll it out between two pieces of wax paper or parchment paper. I rolled my cookies out to a quarter inch of thickness, but you can make them thicker or thinner if you want. You just have to adjust the baking time. And we're gonna make use of a Christmas cookie cutter. Yes, take your gingerbread man cookie cutter and cut out as many shapes as you can from your rolled out dough.
Carefully lift the cutout shape from the wax paper, but be very careful because the dough is delicate and can tear easily. Once you have the shape up, you want to oblong the head to make sure it looks like Chewbacca and the Wookiee shape so people don't mistake it for an Ewok instead. Because this dough isn't very sticky, you need to get a pastry brush and lightly put a thin layer of water over the dough. This will help the Wookiee fur mixture of the shredded wheat cereal and sprinkles stick to the cookie and help it adhere as it bakes. Once you put the water on, be sure to coat the shape very well with the Wookiee fur mixture. And then put it on a non-stick baking sheet without parchment paper. This prevents the shape from spreading out too much in the oven as it bakes. Put it in the oven at 350 degrees. and bake them for 13 minutes. Once they're done, remove them from the oven and let them cool completely on the baking sheet. If you're not into decorating, you can stop there and that's fine, they can be naked. But Chewbacca is known for having this utility belt around him, so get some melted chocolate or some frosting and put on a brown layer first for the utility belt. And then get white chocolate or white frosting and add the little decorations to make it look more authentic. I used melted chocolate and it was a little bit messy. Maybe next time I would use something like royal icing or buttercream frosting. If you want super extra bonus points, you can go ahead and make a face, but I think these look adorable as they are like this. And that is how you make three versions of my chocolate Wookiee cookies. If you had to ask for my favorite, I'd probably say version number two, mainly because it's a lot quicker, there's not so many details, uh, and it's delicious. Well, actually all of them are delicious, but I don't know. I think if it was based on looks, it would be version number three, because look at how cute it is. Look at how cute the Wookiee cookie is. Okay, enough of that and enough of the strange voice. <laughs> I gotta pack the cookies up and send it over to my friends over at Temple of Geek. Don't forget to visit their website and don't forget to visit my website, pixienoms.com, for the written recipes for all three versions of the cookies. So that's it for this episode of Pixie Makes. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodles. Bye. <laughs>